Hi everyone, this is Top3D Shop, and in this video we will walk you through all the features of the Frozen Sonic XL 4K Resin 3D printer, as well as its upgraded 2022 version. The Taiwanese-based company Frozen was founded in 2016, and over the past few years it has gained ground in the resin 3D printer market. Their machines are used all over the world, both in professional fields such as dentistry and jewelry, and by amateur 3D printing enthusiasts. The company's product range includes printers of different price categories, sizes, and accuracy, from the small and inexpensive Sonic Mini to the huge Sonic Mega 8K. In today's review, we would like to introduce you to one of the company's largest units, the Frozen Sonic XL 4K. It's necessary to point out that recently this model has been updated to the Frozen Sonic XL 4K 2022 version. Unfortunately, at the moment there's no way to test the new model. On the other hand, the changes introduced in the latest version are mostly related to the ease of use and do not greatly affect the print quality and the main features of the printer. So in this video, we will talk about the innovations of the 2022 version, but will run all of the test prints on the basic XL4K. Frozen markets this machine as dental ready, therefore we will focus on printing dental models, but not limited solely to those. We will skip the unpacking to move with this review faster. Like all Frozen printers, the Sonic XL 4K and its updated version come fully assembled and ready to operate. The only thing you need to do before starting it up is to screw on the handle to the lid. The XL 4K package content is typical for all Frozen 3D printers. It includes the initial setup instructions, a pair of rubber gloves, a metal and a plastic scraper, Allen key, a couple of screws and a handle, which needs to be screwed to the lid, a USB Wi-Fi dongle to connect the printer to a wireless network, small plastic funnel for draining the resin, USB flash drive, and power cable. Let's take a closer look at the design of the printer and its technical specifications. The Sonic XL 4K is powered by MSLA technology, or as it is also called, LCD SLA. In short, the essence of the technology is as follows. A photopolymer resin is illuminated by an ultraviolet light source through a screen that displays images of the layers, also called masks. A vat with resin is installed on the screen, with the platform submerging into the resin to the depth of one layer. After the layer is illuminated and cured, the platform rises and lowers down, clearing space for another layer, and the cycle goes on. The object is printed out by layers of cured resin. The light wavelength used in this machine is 405 nanometers, which has become a standard for MSLA printers. The Sonic XL 4K can work with any resin that cures with this wavelength, while the market has a lot to offer in terms of materials. The Sonic XL 4K print volume is 120 by 190 by 200 millimeters, which is about 45% larger than that of its predecessor, the Sonic 4K, and other small size resin 3D printers. At the same time, the external dimensions and weight of the XL 4K make it easy to place the printer on a table or allocate space for it in your shop. The only thing to consider is that there must be enough space above the printer for the flip up cover. The lower part of the front panel houses a large touchscreen, we'll talk about it a bit later. The window is made of tinted plastic that does not release ultraviolet light. The idea here is that the user can watch the printing process through this window, but the plastic is rather dark and almost nothing is visible through it. The lid opens along with half of the upper part of the body, which gives convenient access to the entire print area. In the 2022 version, the lid itself has not changed much, except that the color of the plastic window is now different and door closers have been installed on the sides. With this addition, you don't need to worry that the cover will accidentally fall down and damage the body. Three fans with plastic protective grills and foam inserts are located on the sides of the printer. The two fans closer to the front side cool the LED matrix and the screen. The fan at the back cools the printer's electronics. In the XL4K 2022, all the fans were relocated to the lower part of the machine. This does not affect performance in any way, but without the plastic grills on the sides, the printer looks more appealing. The underlying mechanics of the printer are exposed when opening the front door. The Z-axis moves on two 15mm rail guides driven by a ball screw fixed on bearings from below and above. The stepper motor is installed inside the body. In this version, the optical end sensor responsible for homing the Z-axis is located at the machine's bottom. The aluminum massive carriage is powered by a screw drive and the whole assembly is fixed on a wide base attached to the body with two screws. Due to the frame's stability and weight distribution, the Z-axis will not wiggle or deviate causing print defects even under heavy loads. The print platform is quite ordinary. It is made of anodized aluminum with small bevels at the top, allowing the resin flowing off more freely during printing. The platform is attached to the carriage with two thumb screws. Nothing special. The vat in the basic model is quite mediocre for these types of machines. Made of aluminum, it does not have a cutout for draining the resin and a max mark, which usually indicates the necessary resin level for it not to leak out when the platform is immersed in the vat. 
The LCD panel projecting the layer images has a diagonal of 8.9 inches with 4K resolution. Thus, the size of each pixel is 50 micrometers. This is roughly comparable with the specifications of compact resin 3D printers, such as the AnyCubic Photon Mono or Elgu Mars 2 Pro with 2K screen resolution. Such accuracy is usually sufficient for most tasks, except that may seem not enough to jewelers. But for dentistry, technical and artistic objects, this level of detail will be sufficient indeed. Like with most modern MSLA 3D printers, the screen is monochrome, providing good light transmission with less heat emission and geared to work much longer than RGB screens, with Frozen putting its word to 2,000 hours of service life. The curing light module using Para-LED 3.0 technology is installed under the LCD panel. It comprises a matrix of ultraviolet LEDs with special lenses over them, providing uniform curing over the entire print area. Inside of the XL4K 2022 is where we can find the most recent innovations. The design of the resin vat has been changed to incorporate two plastic handles on the sides, a widening at the top to store more material, and a cutout for draining the resin. Again, this does not particularly affect performance, but makes the machine much more user-friendly. A full-fledged air filtration unit is placed to the left of the Z-axis guide. The previous version also has something resembling a filter, but the activated carbon there was stored in a bag and almost useless. Now, a small heater is installed on the opposite side of the filter. All resins have an optimal printing temperature at which the material is not too thick, cures well, and has minimal shrinkage. Thanks to the built-in print area heater, there is no need to control the room temperature as the temperature inside the printer will be maintained automatically. In addition, the lighting module has been updated, with the XL4K 2022 carrying a Para-LED 3.0 LV module. According to Frozen, it is slightly more powerful than the previous version. In addition to a pair of ventilation holes, a power port and power button, two USB ports are located on the back of the printer. One of these ports can host the Wi-Fi dongle that comes with the printer. The second port can be used for a regular USB flash drive for local printing. There's also an Ethernet port for a wired network connection, in case Wi-Fi isn't an option. A microSD port with a memory card already inserted is located on the left side of the printer. This microSD card is not used for printing parts right off of it. The Sonic 4K XL is powered by an Orange Pi single-board computer, responsible for displaying the interface, networking capabilities, and other operating functions. So the microSD card stores the printer's firmware, or more precisely, the frozen operating system. Let's take a look at the Sonic 4K XL software. The device can be controlled through a 5-inch touchscreen on the front panel. The menu is quite simple, but all the essential controls are present. Sliced files for printing, print profiles, settings, shutdown, reboot, status, and update functions. Since the machine is run by an orange Pi board, it is advisable to turn off and restart the printer through this menu. The Z-axis tab is responsible for the Z-axis manual movement and calibration. There are also tabs for checking the lighting module and wireless network settings. The touchscreen menu has been completely redesigned in the updated version of the printer. In addition to a renewed interface, there are also several innovations to the firmware, such as the option to change the power of the LED projector, adjust the temperature inside the printer, and resume printing after a power outage. When the machine is connected to a local network via cable or Wi-Fi, you will see its IP address at the top of the screen. By accessing this address through a web browser, you will be taken to the printer's web interface. We will cover this in more detail. The web interface contains four tabs. Tools allow you to change the language, turn off, and restart the printer. The Wi-Fi menu lets you select and connect to a Wi-Fi network. Profile is responsible for creating, editing, and storing print profiles for different resins. And the Plates tab is used for loading sliced models into the printer. Here you can also select the resin profile and run the file for printing. In our opinion, downloading files and printing via the web interface is the most convenient sequence. However, the option of saving the sliced files to a USB flash drive and starting to print directly from the machine is still available. Let's move on to the test prints. First, it is necessary to calibrate the print bed. This is done in the same way as on any other resin 3D printer. Remove the vat and put a sheet of paper on the screen. Loosen the four screws on the platform so that it can move freely. Go to the Z-axis in the printer's menu and click on the circle between the arrows. The platform will lower down to the bottom. Tighten the screws, gently pressing the platform against the sheet of paper. After that, tap Next and the platform will rise up. The calibration is complete. There are several options for preparing models for printing. The original XL4K comes with a license for the frozen 3D slicing software. In fact, it is basically a rebranded version of the professional firmware slicer. 
carrying an array of functions for professional use, such as flexible settings management, current file preferences, and print status. This slicer has a proven track record among dentists and dental technicians. In addition to the basic features such as rotation, movement, resizing, and others, you can adjust support's generation, both in automatic mode and manually. Any support structure can be edited or removed as desired. There are a lot of settings for supports, and the user can change any part of them. Make models hollow, add drainage holes, create special infills inside hollow models suitable for printing with resins. There is also a built-in function to check the prepared models for the presence of unselected areas needing supports, errors in the models, and other imperfections that can negatively affect the print. There is even a feature that allows you to stack the objects on top of each other and print two or three times more models utilizing the entirety of the printer's build volume. Of course, the expediency of such structures can be questionable since they consume a lot of resin, but the presence of such a feature is certainly encouraging. Frozen printer profiles, as well as print profiles for some resins, are already built into the slicer. Perhaps the only downside of the Frozen 3D slicer is its rather complicated interface. With so many small buttons and options, it's easy to get confused and it may take some time to master it. The Sonic XL 4K 2022 comes with a slicer called Dental Synergy, developed in-house by Frozen. In fact, it has a standard set of functions for almost any slicer, except that it is adapted for printing dental models on Frozen hardware. Dental Synergy has a very user-friendly and simple interface. The buttons are large and self-explanatory with easy navigation. In addition to the specialized software, the printer is compatible with one of the most popular slicing programs, ChituBox, which is free and carries all the necessary functions. The interface is also quite simple, and since the slicer is extremely widespread, it's easy to find plenty of tutorials and troubleshooting guides for it. Of the proposed options, ChituBox seems to be the most convenient and familiar, so we'll be using this software for testing. For the first test, we used NextDent Model Ortho Dental Resin. In a yellow color, it's designed for printing demonstration and master models of teeth, aligner thermoforming molds, etc. We sliced a small model with teeth in ChituBox and a separate model of the bridge, which should be connected to the teeth. If you plan to upload a prepared file via a local network when slicing a model, there is no need to configure the exposure time and movement speed in the software. All of these settings will be used from the resin profiles in the web interface of the printer. The most important thing is that the printer settings in the slicer should be configured correctly, with the layer height matching that of the resin profile in the web interface. Log on to the printer's page through the browser, open the Print Profile tab, and configure the settings. The list is quite standard, except that you need to take into account that all the time is set in milliseconds. On slicing the model, the prepared file is loaded into the printer through the Plates tab. After that, select the resin profile for the job, click the Update button, and the print session will start directly through the web interface. Since we set a slow Z-axis speed complying with NextDent's recommendations, the whole print took almost two and a half hours. It's possible to print faster, but the risk of damaged parts would be proportionally higher. The model with teeth was printed directly on the build plate, while the bridge was suspended on supports for the mounts to be positioned above for best surface quality. After the print, the models were rinsed in isopropyl alcohol, and with the supports removed, placed for post-curing under a UV light. While the first batch was curing, the following models were launched for printing with the same resin. These are jaws in two parts, with the lower jaw incorporating openings. A tooth and a crown designed to fit in one of the openings were printed separately, as well as a small gum pad. We chose to place the parts on supports due to the complex geometry and for best results on the mounts that should connect the two parts with as few traces of supports as possible at the junctions. After printing, all models were washed and supports were removed. By the way, we washed the models by hand using regular brushes. The curing was carried out simply in the sun. In a professional environment, of course, special devices are usually used for these procedures, such as ultrasonic washing vats and dedicated UV lighting chambers. Such devices greatly simplify this stage of post-processing and save time. In the third run with model ortho resin, we printed out five teeth master models, two upper and three lower jaws. They were oriented to cover the entirety of the print surface with no supports. This was aimed to check the uniformity of the screen's lighting on the whole printing area, and no problems occurred. After post-curing, we got these results. The surface quality turned out to be more than satisfactory on all of the parts. Some small traces from the supports were still there, but these seem inevitable. Additional post-processing is required to achieve an ideal part. The most important aspect of this test was to check whether the models with joints would fit each other well. The bridge and the first model were joined fine, with a little effort, but firmly. 
The tooth from the second test print needed additional processing to remove the traces from the support structures and get a snug fit, while there were no issues with the crown, which fit perfectly. The master models from the third test print have special ledges and were designed simply to stand on top of each other. This print was also a great success with no distorted geometry and everything clearly in its place. For the following tests, we used Nextdent Ortho Clear Resin. It is well suited for printing various surgical templates. Such tools are used during operations in order to clearly understand the procedures and manipulations. We printed three regular surgical templates of slightly different types and one template for gingival surgery. All models were suspended on supports since they do not have a single flat surface, being subsequently rinsed and post-cured. And here are the results. Nothing broke off from the supports. Transparent resins usually become slightly cloudy when washed and cured, but it is difficult to show this on camera, and in our opinion, the models turned out great. Even small areas which are essentially defects in the 3D models were printed out successfully, and all the dents and holes were fully cured. Next, we decided to print several models with Sprint Ray Dental Casting Resin. Such consumables are utilized to print parts which are then used to create molds and cast with molten metal. The advantage of such specialized resins is that when burned out, they leave almost no ash residue. For this test, a clasp prosthesis, a crown, and a bridge were placed on the build plate. And to diversify this review, we threw in a couple of rings to get some samples for jewelry applications as well. Of course, jewelry is usually not printed with dental resins and requires a higher screen resolution, but it was interesting to see how this machine would hold up in this scenario. As expected, the print went through successfully without any issues. The class prosthesis turned out excellent given the large number of complex and overhanging forms. None of the supports failed during print, leaving almost no traces on the surface after the removal. The crown and bridge also turned out well. The rings at first glance do not have any defects and even feature high detail. Upon closer inspection, some areas do have small stain marks on the smooth curves. This is the consequence of how the screen is pixelated due to the not very high resolution. Partially, this problem can be solved using anti-aliasing when slicing the models in the surface. But as we've already said, for jewelry, it is desirable to use a printer with higher XY resolution. For the last test, we decided to print something completely different. We poured the usual fun-to-do ash gray modeling resin and launched a highly detailed art model print. To be honest, we don't know who this character is, but he resembles a monk or martial artist of some kind. In addition to very high detail, the model is compelling in that it can be printed without any support structures. The monk stands on one leg and has a very small area of contact with the build plate, so a small raft was added at the bottom for better adhesion and stability. The model was scaled up in size to take up the entirety of the build area's height, resulting in a 15-hour print. After washing and post-curing, we got a very beautiful and detailed model, with even the smallest elements pronounced. Textures of fabrics, patterns, thin ribbons, everything turned out well. The model looks really impressive. Some areas have a more distinct shine to them, but that is our fault, as we should have devoted more effort to washing the part before curing. In any case, this is a definite success. Let's draw a conclusion. The machine performed well in all of the tests with no issues or failed prints. The quality of the final prints is more than decent. The XY resolution of this printer is not the highest, but it is quite enough to handle the applications it was created for. At the same time, it has a fairly large print area, which can save you significant amounts of time. As for the Frozen Sonic XL4K 2022, it has the same pros as the previous version while being upgraded with several very pleasant innovations, which will definitely have a positive effect on the overall experience. This is Top 3D Shop with the Frozen Sonic XL 4K Resin 3D Printer Review. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. See you soon!